Hi everyone! Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. We are going to make a little bee applique today. We had a request on the Monday live stream to make a bee applique, and a bee applique has been on our list of things to make for quite a while now. So we thought since it's the spring, this is a perfect quick little project that you can whip up using some scraps and you can add a little busy bee to a busy project. These look cute on hats, bags, blankets, anything you want to add a little bit of busyness to. <laughs> And you can really fiddle with the yarn that you use for this project. So I'm going to show you two different versions of this before I make one. And I'm just going to talk about weight category and fiber usage in the material section. But just remember that this is a scrap project. So unless you're making it for something that needs to be washed frequently, like maybe a baby blanket or a hat or something, you can really use whatever yarn you've got on hand for this, so long as the colors make sense to you for your busy little bee. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn. We will head on over to the craft table and we will get busy <laughs> together. <laughs> In order to make a bee applique, you need very little yarn. I'm using an acrylic. I'm using a size 3 or lightweight or DK weight yarn for today's example in yellow and in purple because it's hard to see black, but I recommend using black. And I'm using a size 4 weight in white just for the two wings. Now I've got two different bees here that are varied a little bit. I'm going to explain that in a moment. But I do recommend using the same yarn weight and the same fiber for your bee applique if it's being made to put on an existing project. That way, if you wash the project, the whole thing will work properly together. I am using a four millimeter hook for this project. This is also known as a G or a six. I've got a pair of scissors and a yarn needle as well. This is, this bee was made using a three weight yellow, a two or three weight black, and a four weight white with the wings. So I've mixed up my weights a little bit here. All of it is acrylic, however, and this one is all four weight. That's a four weight yellow, a four weight black, and a four weight white. So this bee comes out looking a little beefier, if you will. <laughs> um, but you can mix your weights together if you need to, especially if you're sort of doing a little bit of stash diving. You only need around seven yards of the, the black, in this case I'm using purple, a little about four yards of the yellow, and maybe two yards of the white. So you don't need very much, and if you're just sort of fiddling around with scraps, then I encourage you to maybe err on the side of a slightly lighter weight black um, or a black that feels a little skinnier than the yellow and the white you're using, just because the black really does function like an outline uh, component of this particular pattern. But if all you've got available is the same weight category, it will still look like a B. A uh, pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a G6 hook, and once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to start with our black, and I'm again, I'm using purple for demonstrative purposes, but you want to use black. You're going to take your black yarn, make a slip knot on your hook, and you're going to chain eight. Once you have eight chains, you're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the next one, and single crochet into it. And you're going to single crochet in each chain all the way back. So at the end of this first row, which is the very middle of our B, you will have seven single crochet stitches. Once you have seven single crochet stitches across the middle, you are going to pull up on that working loop and set it aside. You are not cutting your yarn, you're just pulling up on that loop so it doesn't want to unravel on you. Then you're going to grab your yellow. We're going to take our yellow yarn, put a slip knot on our hook, pick up row one, and into that first single crochet you made, you're going to join your yellow yarn now with a slip stitch. So you join your yellow yarn with a slip stitch in the first stitch of row one. Skip two stitches and into the next stitch you're going to double crochet seven times. Seven double crochet into that stitch. So slip stitch to join, skip two stitches, work seven double crochet into the next stitch.
Once you've got seven double crochet work into that stitch, you're going to skip the next two stitches, find the last stitch, that's the one that your working loop is still attached to, and you're going to slip stitch into that. So just ignore your working loop for now. You can sort of pull taunt on it a little bit, just so you make sure, or I should say taut on it, just so it doesn't gap out on you, but that will get fixed when we come back to that loop. You're going to flip the whole thing upside down, you're going to insert your hook in the bottom of that last stitch and slip stitch. So now you're at the bottom edge of what was your foundation row. You're going to skip the next two underside of those foundation chains. Find the chain that is directly underneath where you worked those seven double crochets and work seven double crochets into the stitch directly beneath the first set of seven double crochets. Once you have seven double crochet worked into that stitch, which again is directly opposite the first set of seven, you're going to skip the next two stitches and find the foundation chain that is directly underneath that first single crochet of the row. Get your hook in there and slip stitch to join. That is it. You've got the middle of your B, you've got the top and the bottom part of your B now. You can fasten off the yellow and weave in those short tails. Again, you're not doing anything with the purple yarn just yet, or I suppose in your case it will be black yarn. So you can fasten off and then take a moment to weave in those little yellow tails across the back of your little bee. Once you've woven in those tails, don't worry if you've got some funny little edges on the side of row one because this will eventually be covered by your wings, as you can sort of see here and here. You want to find that working loop of your black yarn, again in my case I'm using purple, put your hook back in it, tighten things up, and now we're going to turn our little bee body sideways so that we're looking at the edge of what was row one, and we're going to single crochet directly over top of that slip stitch in the edge of row one, and you're going to do that twice, so two single crochet into the edge of what was row one, working over top of that slip stitch, so it kind of disappears. We're going to single crochet now into each of the next two stitches, so we're working up the side. You can work over top of your short tail or just leave it out to the end. So two single crochet in the edge of row one to begin, single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Now you're going to skip a stitch, you're going to work into what was the middle stitch of that first set of seven stitches, so this will be stitch number four of that fan of seven. So skip a stitch and into that next stitch you're going to work seven double crochet. Make sure you have seven double crochet all worked into that little stitch. You're going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into each of the next two stitches. That will bring you down to this edge here. This is where you slip stitch to join your yellow yarns. Um, slip stitch to join and then slip stitch to fasten off. You're just going to skip that. Into the edge of row one you're going to work two single crochet, so just like we did on the other side. And now you're going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches, so again you're going to sort of skip where you knotted your yarn or slip stitch on, you're looking for the actual stitches. You're going to single crochet into each of those next three stitches, and again this will bring us up to the middle of that fan stitch of seven, so you're looking for the very middle stitch, and we're going to make a little stinger. So this is the head up here, and now we're going to make a little stinger. So we're going to single crochet into that stitch, chain three, 
skip the first chain from the hook, you're going to slip stitch into the second chain, and then single crochet into the next chain, and right back into that same place where you worked a single crochet, you're going to single crochet. So that middle stitch of the seven gets single crochet, chain three, skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the next chain, single crochet into the last chain, and then single crochet all back into the same place. That leaves you with three stitches left. You're going to single crochet into each of those stitches, and then you're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch that you made at the edge of what was row one. So slip stitch to join, but we're not done yet. We're not fastening off. We've got one more row to go. Up here on the head, we want to add a couple of antenna. So you've got five double crochets, just like we did with the yellow ones. We've got five worked in for you, black for me, purple. And you want to focus on that middle one. So always look for the middle stitch. And this time we're going to be using the stitches on either side of it to turn a little, to put a little um, antenna into place. But in order to get there, we're going to do some slip stitching. So we're going to slip stitch in each of the next six stitches. So right from where we joined the row, we're going to start slip stitching. Try not to crochet too tightly or too loosely. Slip stitch into those six stitches. And now we're going to make a little antenna. We're going to chain four. Skip the first chain from the hook and slip stitch into each of the remaining three chains. You're going to slip stitch back into the top of the same double crochet that you left, and that's one little antenna made. Slip stitch into the next stitch. This will be the very middle top stitch of the head. Slip stitch into the next stitch, and we're going to make another little antenna. Chain four. Skip the first chain from the hook and slip stitch into each of the remaining chains. And then slip stitch back into the top of that same double crochet. So now you've made a couple of little antenna. They sit off the top of the head and they're evenly spaced. They sit on either side of that middle stitch of the head. All right. We're going to slip stitch now through each of these remaining stitches. So now you're just nice and even. You're slip stitching in each stitch all the way around. This is just giving our bumblebee or our little bee here a bit more of a frame, a little more strength. You don't want to do it too tightly or too loosely, but it's like giving it a little bit of an outline. So it really stands out as an applique. When you get down here to the stinger, we've got a little stitch and then we've got the little stinger and then we've got another stitch. So we're not going to go up and around the stinger. We're actually going to bypass it. We're going to slip stitch right in between the two single crochets that were in that bottom point and then into the next stitch. So you're just skipping the actual stinger, but you are filling in that little itty bitty space that may have sat between the two single crochets that sat in that middle bottom stitch. And then you've just got a few more stitches left before you're back up to the edge of what was row one. You've got one more little stitch left and then you can slip stitch into the first slip stitch of this row, which was row four, and that is it. You've got an itty bitty little bug body one little stinger down here. You've got a couple of little antenna up top. You can now fasten off, but you want to leave yourself a nice long tail for sewing because you're going to want to sew your applique down to your project by working around the purple, or in my case purple, but in your case all of the little black stitches all the way around your little bugaboo. So leave yourself a nice long tail for sewing, and if you still have a short tail left, take a moment and weave it in. Next, we want to make our little bee fly. So we need to make a couple of wings. I've already got one made here. We're going to make two. You're going to leave a little tail at the end so you can stitch it down. And the wings are sewn down on the edge. So when you flip this over, 
It doesn't really matter what's going on underneath your applique because this will not show. You're going to stitch the whole thing down by stitching around the black outline of your B. You don't need to stitch down the antenna and you don't need to stitch down the wings. They can sort of sit freely, but you will be stitching all the way around the B body when you sew it down. But you can see that the little wings overlap. They sort of stick off to the sides, but they cover off the edges of what was the either side of row one. So what we're going to do is make two wings. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. So you cross your yarn, insert your hook through the loop to pick up the yarn, and then chain one. And that secures your circle, so now you can work a bunch of stitches into it. Work all of your stitches over top of the short tail so we can cinch the circle shut when we're done. And here we go. We're going to begin with two single crochet. Now to half double crochet, to double crochet, and that brings us to the top of the wing, so we're going to chain one, just to give ourselves a little bit of a point. So two single crochet, two half double crochet, two double crochet, chain one, that's the first half of the wing done. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, but in reverse. Two double crochet. Two half double crochet. And two single crochet. Take that short tail, cinch up your wing nice and tight. Try not to have any little space showing in the middle. And then you're going to slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet you made to join. Fasten off, leave a tail of about 15 centimeters, maybe six inches for sewing. And then you're gonna take that short tail and you're gonna weave it in around the back of the wing and you can cinch that little tail as you go through, through some of those stitches just to cinch up any little space that might have been left behind in that wing. Next we're going to sew our little wings into place and like I showed you earlier you want to have them anchored on either side of that row one, that little black stripe across his back and most of the wing is going to sort of sit off the side of your little bee. So here we go. We're going to take our yarn needle and thread up the long tail left on one of the wings. I like to point the chain one, the little chain one space, which kind of creates a little bit of a point if you kind of grab it and pull a little bit. It gives it just a little bit of a shape. That point faces out. You're going to anchor the part of the wing that has your tail attached to it right on the edge of what was row one. I like to hold it in place. And you're just going to sew right through the B. And there's only a few stitches required here. So as I stitch around, I'm just gently poking my needle through the body of the B, directly underneath where the edge of the little wing is going to lie. And I'm making sure that I'm not catching my little sewing tail from the rest of the bee. So I get that. Now when I get to the edge, I'm just going to flip it over here and I'm going to poke my needle through the edge of the bee and underneath some of the stitches underneath the wing. So this just helps me anchor the wing a little bit and I want to make sure that it's not moving too much on me. That looks good still. The thing is you can get your first wing done and then you can worry about making the second wing look like it's uh, relatively even to it. Just a couple more stitches now. Try not to sew too tightly. You don't want to um, warp the shape of your wing. 
and then you're back around to the beginning again. And once you've finished sewing all the way, sort of halfway around, you're kind of grabbing the underside of the wing over here, and then you sort of stitch down the other side of the wing. Just bring that yarn tail through to the back. You're going to go ahead and do exactly the same thing on the other side. So again, I like to kind of hold it in place and start stitching all the way around. And once you're finished sewing down wing number two, you're going to bring that sewing tail to the underside of your bee, and we're going to knot the two tails together. But first of all, you want to sew down wing number two. Once you've sewn down your second wing, just bring that sewing tail through to the back. Lay your bee down flat on your workspace, and you're going to tie a pretty tight knot with those yarns. Now don't tie so tightly that you squeeze your bee together. You want to lay your bee flat, tie those two, sort of hold them taut so that they don't want to, um, they lay flat against your bee, but they don't actually change the shape of your bee. And then just tie a nice tight knot. Do it three, maybe even four times if you're unsure. And then you can just trim what's left. This is not going to show through. You don't need to weave in the tails. They're going to be underneath your bee when you sew it down. And you're done. Make sure that long sewing tail is available for you. When you stitch it down, you'll just be sewing and grabbing all of the little black stitches as you work all the way around. But now your little bee is ready to be sewn onto the project that you made it for. I kind of like the little purple one. I don't know. I mean, I know it's not a traditional bee color, but there's just something about that purple and yellow that, I don't know, it still makes me think of a little bugaboo. Uh, I think it's kind of cute. I might add this to one of my big beautiful baskets here in the craft room. I think they're going to become the receptacle of a lot of these random little appliques that I make, because I often make several of them when I do a tutorial, and I don't always need like seven or eight bumblebees. <laughs> Anyway, we hope you enjoyed making that little bee along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful spring weekend. Bye, guys! Hi, everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!